Today we're going to look at how we can create a single degree of freedom oscillator in OpenSeas just to show off the way that we would do a transient analysis. So this image over here on the right is what we're going to be modeling. First let's set up some variables. So we're going to set uh, k, let's just give everything um, a unit value. Uh, so our k is actually going to be made up of the area and it's going to be made up of the modulus which we're just going to give the value of k divided by e. So we also want to define the length. We want to define the mass. And we're going to define the initial displacement, uh, which we'll just leave at one millimeter. Uh, my mistake, let's make sure these are commented. Okay, so there are variables. Now we'll just set up the analysis. So we're going to use wipe. We're going to do uh, our basic builder model with two dimensions. Uh, this is just because the materials that we're going to be using require two dimensions. We're going to set node 1 at the origin. We're going to set node 2 at the value of L in the x direction. And we're going to fix node 1 in all dimensions and fix node 2 not in the x dimension, but in the y and the rotation about z. Something else we want to do is we want to assign a mass. So this mass command takes the node ID, so this will be a nodal mass. We're going to assign the mass to the second node. Uh, so the second node here representing our main mass. And we're going to give it a mass of M in the X direction and in the Y and Z uh, zero mass. Now to set up our spring. So we're going to use a truss element for this. So we're going to set up a material. So we've got a uniaxial material um, and it's just going to be an elastic material. We're going to give it the material tag and we're going to give it the value of E. Uh, next we want to set our element and we're going to use a truss element. Um, now our truss element, we're going to give it a tag of 1 and we're going to apply it from node 1 to node 2 and we're going to give it the area and the material tag. So now it's going to take this elastic material and apply it to the truss. So before we do our dynamic analysis we actually have to perform a static analysis to move the mass to the initial displacement u0. There's a few different ways that we can set the initial displacement. One simple way would be to just apply a load to the mass uh, that's something similar to what we did in the previous video, but we would have to calculate the load based on the spring stiffness to get the displacement we want. What we're actually going to do is we're going to use the displacement control integrator to control the displacement of the mass, not, not the load of the mass. So all we're going to do now is just apply a unit load. So first we want to set up a time series. Uh, and I'll just set the pattern tag now because we'll need it later. So our time series, we're going to take a linear time series and we're going to give it that time series tag. And now we want to set the pattern, we're just going to use a plain pattern. Uh, we're going to give it that the pattern tag and the time series tag. And inside that pattern, we're going to apply a load to node 2, um, just a unit, unit load in the x direction and 0 in the y and rotational directions. Okay, so let's now set our analysis. So we'll set the constraints. We're just going to use a transformation constraint this time. Uh, number uh, the RCM number is going to be good. 
Uh, let's set the system. We're going to use a linear algorithm. We're going to set a test. Uh, so this, these values you might have to play with, uh, but for now uh, we'll use these values here. Our integrator, as I said, is going to be a displacement control integrator. Um, and we're going to use that to apply it to node 2 in the x direction. Um, and the displacement that we're looking for is the initial displacement u0. We'll tell it that our analysis is going to be static and we're going to analyze for one time step. Just to check our results, let's look at the node displacement at node 2 in the x direction. Uh, so just made a quick mistake. This should be the area up here. All right, great. So we've got a unit displacement here. Uh, so what we want to do now is we want to wipe our analysis and reset it, um, but our mass is going to keep the same displacement that we just set. Uh, so we're going to set the time back to zero. So because we went through one time step, the time was not zero. Um, and then we're going to wipe analysis. Make sure it's spelled correctly. Uh, and now we're just going to set a new analysis. So uh, this time we're going to use the UMF pack system. Uh, number can stay the same. Uh, constraints can stay the same. And our test can stay the same. In fact, we probably didn't need the test for the linear analysis. Our integrator, we're going to use the Newton, the Newmark integrator, um, and the values of 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 are going to be fine here. Um, our algorithm, we're going to use the Newton algorithm. And finally, our analysis is going to be a transient analysis. What we also have to do is we have to remove this load that we previously applied. So we're going to remove, and we remove the load, what's called the load pattern. And we're going to give it the pattern tag of the load that we want to remove. Uh, let's just move this back up here. For our transient analysis, we want to give it a duration. Uh, let's set this as a variable. So set our duration and we're going to give it um, let's say a value of five seconds and we're also going to define our time step and let's use a 0 0.1 second interval for our time step uh, what we could do now is we could uh, use the analyze keyword um, so we could analyze and then we could say 100 time steps and that would go up to uh, 10 seconds for example 100 0 0.1 second time steps uh, we're actually going to do it a little bit of a nicer way using a while loop so let's say first write out transient analysis started just a nice message for us and then we're going to set stable to zero and then we're going to say while stable equals zero and get time is less than the value of the duration 
we're going to set stable to, so we're using the analyze here. We're analyzing one time step and we also have to give it the time step. So if the analyze step is successful, it returns the value zero and then we'll jump back into the loop. Uh, if, for example, our simulation becomes unstable, then we'll, it'll return a different value and the analysis will stop. Uh, and also, once our time reaches duration, we want the analysis to stop. Okay, so we're ready to run the analysis. And we've just done it. Um, again, we haven't actually asked it to output anything. So for every step, we're going to print out the time. And we're going to print out as a float percent f the node displacement at node 2 in the x direction. Great, that looks good. So let's see what I've done. I just forgot a bracket. And great, so here we have our output. So here we have the time steps on the in the first column and we have the displacement. So we know that we start at a displacement of u0, which is 1. And as the time goes by, our mass is going to be pulled back by the, strip, by the spring at about between 1.6 and 1.2 seconds, we're hitting that uh, displacement of 0. Um, and then it's going to start compressing the string again. Um, and this should look like pretty much like a sine wave. Uh, what we can do, instead of just printing all the output here, uh, we'd have to go in and copy and paste this if we want to use it somewhere else. We can actually set a recorder. Um, and a recorder basically will just save this information out to a file for us. So up here, let's define our recorder. So it's going to be a node recorder. And we're going to output to a file, we'll just call it test.out. Uh, we can call this whatever, give this whatever extension you want, txt, uh, dat, uh, out is a nice convention for us though. Uh, we're going to give it the time flag, so this just means it will print out the time values next to it. And then we're going to ask for node 2 in the degree of freedom 1, and we're going to ask for the displacement. So let's run this, and we get the same output here. The difference is if we now visit our test.out file, we have the output spat into a file. So we can use this file now to import into other programs and maybe plot it. I'll just show you an example of that now. So we're just going to open a document. And in this Python file, we're just going to um, import a couple of libraries. So pandas. Uh, gives us, allows us to uh, import the data as a data frame. Uh, we're going to use matplotlib to plot the data. So first we're going to use pandas read CSV function. We're going to give it the test.out file that we just created with our recorder. We're going to, to use whitespace as a delimiter. So that's dlim white space is true. We are going to name both of the columns. So the first column in our output is to the time column. And the next, the second column is the displacement column. And we're going to ask it to use the uh, time column. So column zero as the index of our data frame. Let's just have a look at this. So if we run this Python file, uh, let's see, my apologies, name should actually be names. Great, so uh, we've just printed out uh, this data frame and it all looks good. So next thing to do is to plot the data frame. So uh, we're going to create a figure using the subplots function. 
we're going to plot on the axis, we're going to ask for the data and we're going to plot the displacement column. And lastly, we're just going to put in a horizontal line, so align at y equals zero. Uh, we'll give it a line, a small line width, and we'll give it a color of black. And now we're just going to ask it to show the plot and run this. And great, here's our plot. So we've got our displacement on the y-axis and time across the x-axis. So that's just a simple way that you can uh, visualize the data in Python. So that was how to do a dynamic analysis, just a simple dynamic analysis in OpenSeas. And of course, you can use this now and apply it to more complicated models. Thanks, bye.